Okay, so we'll go ahead and talk a bit about on campus, how to find opportunity both on campus and part-time opportunity as well. So I always say to begin to the process, any on campus positions that has to do with um, finding student worker um, or work study position are posted through Handshake. Now, not every single department will post the positions at a particular time, meaning that not every single department will always post all positions on the first day of the, of the semester. Some offices may have vacancy and opening either throughout the semester as they find opportunity available or if they have a particular need within their respective offices as well. However, almost all the position when the vacancies available will be posted through Handshake. For those of you who don't know what Handshake is, it's a comprehensive career management system that you all should be using it on a regular basis to search for both on-campus, off-campus opportunity, engage with employed within the college and outside the college for your career development needs. Now, many outside off-campus employees also post opportunity throughout through the system to, to indicate to the college and say, hey, we want to recruit St. Francis College students um, for many of the opportunities that they are available within their organizations. Those positions can be both part-time opportunity, freelance opportunity, volunteer opportunity, internships for both fall, spring, summer, or even all year round, along with full-time opportunity within the system. The full-time opportunity can be both entry level along with mid-level or even senior level positions. Um, the benefit of being a St. Francis College student is that you will have access to the Handshake system as alumni after you graduate as well. The only thing we will ask all the students in the room if you are current students is that making sure that you do update your profile all er um, early and often. Meaning each semester, if you are change of your status, whether or not you change your cell phone number, if you are updating your um, you know, location for your mailing addresses, or even your interest. Let's say I'm now interested in sports and I, I, in the past I really interested in healthcare. Please take, a time, take some time to update your settings under your profile itself. You click on the icon, this is a student profile that we use. If you click on the profile section, that's where you want to indicate that information. Create interest is also a place that you want to update because we will send you targeted opportunity through the system for career interest that might be relevant for you. So oftentimes we do come across opportunity that might not be posted on Handshake, but may be relevant for you to apply for. An example that I recently sent out is the National Basketball Association have, po have uh, opened the application for opportunity. So what we then do is we could send out a target email for student interest in sports through the career interest sections to you to say, hey, if you're interested in applying for MBA internship program, now you can apply, you, you can apply through the particular link that is posted through that communication, okay? So it's something to keep in mind as you updating your profile, making sure you do that often when you come across opportunity within the systems. When you go and lock on the system, this is what you see when you lock on, there's multiple tabs that you will see here. The job section is where you see at a given time active posting in the system. There's over 6,200 opportunities available within Handshake that you can apply for as a student. Now. Not every single one of them will always be on campus shop. Not every single one of them will be for full time. Like I said, it could be combination of many opportunity and um, industry or interest. But on the tab here, you will notice that there's full time bubble and categories, internship, part time. And one thing you can easily click on is the on campus positions right here. If you click on the on campus button, automatically it filter what is currently active in the, in the system that different departments within the college might be actively applying for, okay? So if you were to look for exclusively opportunity within the college, these are the example opportunity available. Now, many offices may be in different cycles of recruitment, meaning that, for example, our office currently is recruiting for a particular position that is a pay 
positioned, can be transparent. We are going through the interview process soon. So if you apply at this moment, we may not get to your application until we go through a first round of interviews. Now, if you see posting like this, where my fellow colleague uh, Malik from the Multicultural Student uh, Affairs Office are now actively recruiting for a position. Now, that if you see something called fresh, means that there's a most recent positions just posted in the system. So I will always encourage a general rule of thumb for any opportunity, you want to apply within the first three weeks of a job ad. Any general rule of thumb for whether or not internship on or off campus or on campus position, you want to apply within the first couple of weeks of a job ad because chances are some company will start to look at applicants and applications early and often, and they can start as early as within the couple of weeks of a job posting. Now, I'm not discouraging you to apply for opportunity that looks like has been posted for quite some time. I'm, let me be clear, I'm not discouraging that, but you can apply for those opportunity if you still come across that and you're still interested. But like I said, the best practice is always when you see an opportunity comes in, apply within a first couple, first month of that window in general application in many companies, okay? Unless they say an application deadline that is very specifically indicated, meaning that most of the time they will wait that the deadline is complete. They will look through the entirety of the applicant pool to, to then select for candidates. So there's multiple methods that companies use for, for screening these opportunities as well. As you look at on-campus position, you will notice the descriptions of the task. You can read through the job ad in detail here and I will encourage you to please pay attention to the job ad. Oftentimes we receive application and say, and as a hiring manager, I'll say, so why are you applying for it, right? Because it doesn't necessarily have a natural fit of what your interest will be in relation to the position. Take some time to actually read through a job ad and see what are some of the qualifications, requirements, and opportunity they're asking you to do. And just really take some time to think about it before you click on the apply button. Now, if you have a resume on file, meaning that under the My Documents section that I just showed right here, you uploaded your documents, your up-to-date resume, you can, you can click on the apply button and it will ask you for that information. If for any reason, they have a very specific restrictions, like here, your school year does not match. You need to read through the job ad to say, what are they asking for regarding the school year? Usually this will tell you what are some of the requirement and qualifications that you might not be qualified for it based on what is listed on your profile. So make sure you go back to the profile in this case to, to see whether or not what you indicated in your profile matches your current status. And if that's the case and you're still not qualified, read through that closely to see what are their qualification in the full descriptions and the requirement to see whether or not you indeed qualify. If you have issues with that and say, hey, I'm qualified, but I can still, I cannot apply, email us. We can take a look at a job ad to see if any other restrictions or settings that the, po the posting is listed in the system does not match what they are intended to have for the, for the applicant pool. This is pretty common, especially for off-campus internship opportunities, okay? Questions about that first, feel free to type in the chat. I will mention one thing. If you're one of the best advice, I would say generally speaking, and, and Greg, feel free to chime in here as well. We often see approximately about 40 to 50, up maximum of about 50-ish, you know, uh, opportunity within the college. That's sort of like the, the number that we have been tracking and seeing at a particular time, meaning that 50-ish departments and colleagues have had work with a student employee in the past. Not all 50 app departments will be actively recruiting for a student at a given time. An example, our office and the Career Center have two posting right now, two opportunity that we have for student, um, student employees. 
one of them's already failed because we recruited a student from the fall semester that the students will continue, that we want to continue with that particular individuals. So now the second position is open because the students no longer part of the organizations and now we're recruiting for a new person to replace that role. So meaning that at a given time, there might be opportunity available throughout the semester. So check here often and on a regular basis. If you are not restricted by your status to apply for opportunity off campus, meaning for those of you who are domestic students in the room, I will highly encourage you as the career center colleagues will always be the case, please consider additional opportunity outside of the college. So you all can do the math here. If you have a maximum of 50 position, 50 opportunity, and there's 2,400 of you all at the college, and I'm confident to say a good number of you are uh, wanting to apply for opportunity within campus. Chances are, one, you have a very competitive application pool. Make sense so far? If you're not restricted by your status in the college to apply for off-campus opportunity, I may click on here for one second. You click on part-time position and take out the filter for part opportunity. There's 953 part-time opportunity. Right now, at this moment, on this day, there are eight active positions posted for on campus. So what do you think the chances are for you to explore if you're not restricted with your status to apply for a part-time job versus an on-campus position? Same thing goes to that. If you are not restricted by your status to apply for internship, the 1600 active internship are currently listed. And you can search for keywords as remote. You can limit it by your location. You have the option to do that right here as well. And you can even, for those of you who may be international students, you can say, okay, I wanna see what internship are accepting CPT, OBT. Now you have 499 position indicating, say employee accept OPT and CPT applicant for internship opportunity. You can even narrow it by spring. So I want to look at what is available right now for spring internship that has the OPT acceptance. Now the 65 position that indicate to us that they are actively accepting CPT applicants or OPT applicants. So I know all of you are smart students in the room. You can do the math. What are the chances of you be able to get higher? One out of 65 potentially or one out of eight, okay? So that's just my suggestions for you all to consider and you're thinking about that. If you're not restricted by your visa status or any other status, other alternative places you can look at, obviously external website, like Indeed, Simply Hire, <laughs> any other website you can search for as well. One other site that we have partnership with, if you are a domestic student in the room, Go to your My SFC portal. Hope you all be able to know how to get to that. Scroll down to the Career Center site. Scroll down to the bottom of here. You can link to the handshake. You can do. You can be able to log on to there or going to your direct uh, one login sessions. If you click on here, Quad Jobs. This is another alternative site that you can also click on to search for any freelance opportunity within the New York region or within your neighborhood that you can also explore and apply for. So like a marketplace, if somebody looking for a babysitter role, if looking, if looking for private tutors, if they're looking for any and all different kinds of um, short-term temporary employment, this is also another place that you can click on it. You click on the arrow, it will load up to a site like this, Quad Job. You can create your account when you click on Quad Job. You can create, create your account, click on student, there should be a sign up button there. Sign up using your my SSC email account. It will automate load up as you're part of St. Francis College student network. And then once you click on it, you, can, you should be able to log in. So I just log in as a student. And these are things you can search for. And they will see here, you can narrow by location. 
you narrow by where you are in proximity of your location to see what types of opportunity may also be available for you to look for. Now, those could be, this is just a marketplace for you to search for it. There's no guarantee for you to hire for employment, but it just gives you another alternative place for you to search for options and opportunity. As you can see here, not every single one of these are relevant and appropriate for you to apply for, but it just gives you an example and idea, but it does give you information about who the person is, what they're looking for. When you create your dashboard, you can create your profile, meaning that who you are. I encourage you sometimes to write it out, some of the detail about you, okay? Write a bit about if you have experiences babysitting in the past, if your experience is creating a website for a company or your own. Write a little bit about that information on your profile because some the employer on the system can also search for you to, to, to reach out to you directly from here as well, okay? Now, if you are a international student, this particular job site is not applicable for you because you will need to have some sort of visa status in order for you to apply for it, meaning that you need to be eligible to work in the US. So some of these positions, you will need to have CPT, OPT backed in order for you to be able to apply for this. And as a professional advice for you, if you're using CPT, OPT, I will encourage you to apply for internships in the system. Use it for something that's related to your industry and your profession, rather than use it to apply for babysitting positions or anything like that. My personal advice for you on record. So something you can consider, ultimately that's your decision, but any of the positions that posted here, you have to be eligible to work. Questions about that first? Lastly, I want to have Greg to actually talk a bit about the on-campus recruiting. Once you have a job, let's say within campus, right? Let's say in the Christender and now offer a position to, you know, Greg. Greg, as a student, what will be something you need to expect to do in order for you to move on to the next step? Because oftentimes students are a bit confused about what do I do now once the offer is, is, is provided for you. So great, do you wanna talk a bit about the process itself? I'll be happy to Dean Tang, thank you so very much. And the process is really analogous to once you accept a full-time job, so you'll get used to this more and more. But when someone is hired, they just don't start working right then and there. There's a process, there are some legalities, there are forms that need to be filled out, et cetera. So for example, congratulations, uh, you've been hired as an on-campus employment student. Uh, you will be given by your supervisor a referral form and you'll get instructions from the supervisor as to how to fill that out or where to send that, you actually send that to the financial aid group. They will complete that referral form and send it on to the payroll group. Now, many times, the first position that you get, you need to then submit what's called some identification paperwork, uh, passport, some other IDs, et cetera, and there are all guidelines for what you'll need to do. So you would then go to the bursar, and submit paperwork that you would need to do. Uh, you'll work with Bursar, they'll take a copy of it or a couple of things. They'll give you back the originals and they'll send it off to payroll. When payroll has received all this information they need, then you are entered into what's called the ADP system. ADP is a payroll system that we use here at St. Francis College to pay our employees, our on-campus students, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So when the payroll individual does that, you'll then receive an email from the system that will instruct you to fill out some tax forms and a few other things. And again, this is all very systematic, but it's very, very important that these papers are submitted, filled out, et cetera, all before you start to work. Okay, because if these are not submitted and filled out before you start to work, it puts the college in jeopardy with uh, external auditors and federal auditors as well. That's not a good position to be. 
So once all of this is submitted and you receive everything approved, that it's all completed satisfactory, then and only then you'll start to work. Your supervisor and or a designee of him or her or, or him, or, him or she will train you. Uh, and then as you do your work, every other week a timesheet will be completed by yourself. Your supervisor will sign off on that. That'll go to payroll. Uh, you will be paid. And then naturally performance feedback is a very important part of the on-campus uh, employment process because this is a training ground for you. Yes, you're contributing to the operations of the college, but this is also a great development opportunity for yourself. So your supervisor will give you some feedback. Sometimes it's informal. Maybe once a semester, it will be more formal as a bit of a sit down performance chat. And then at the end of the semester, your employment automatically terminates, if you will, ends. And then you have an opportunity with your supervisor if he or she wants you to continue on the next semester and you want to do that, that's great. Uh, you fill out then just a referral form and continue forward from there. Uh, sometimes, as Cheryl mentioned in the Career Center, we had two uh, people here work study students for the fall or on-campus employment students for the fall. One continued on with us for the spring, and the other found an internship and is not continuing on with us. So I know that's kind of a quick overview, but you can see it's purposely structured so that paperwork flows very smoothly and evenly from yourself and your supervisor to Bursar, to financial aid, to payroll, that gets you into the system and then you run from there. I will add a couple of things here. Thank you, Grace, for, for the overview here. One, you're not guaranteed a position at any on-campus position, whether or not you're current or returning students. You, it's important for you as a student to have an ongoing dialogue with any supervisor that you work with, let's say you do have a job on campus, to connect with them and communicate your desire, your interest. If this is a great place for you, you want to continue to work there, and there's a great relationship between you and the supervisor and the need of the department, talk to them, let them know that you're interested in returning for the next semester or beyond. Keep in mind that budget, um, any student employment position within the college are paid through the departmental budget and depends on the operating budget of any particular department. That's where they dictate the number of hiring options available based on the operating budget. And just to be transparent here, the operating budget cycle do run from July 1st to June 30th. So oftentimes, em employers and departments will start to consider for next semester how many students' opportunity might they be able to start to request for and get approved for throughout the spring semester for next fiscal year. So let's say you're currently active working in a, in a particular office and you're interested in returning because you're a great experience, you want to continue to grow. It's very important for you to indicate that information with the supervisor that you're currently working with. That general rule of thumb goes to any off-campus employer as well. If you're a great internship and you say, hey, I wonder if it's a possibility for me to continue to stay on. If your status allow for you, for you to do so, and you can be able to authorize to work in the US, potentially then you can have a conversation with supervisor early and often and, and, ex and explore what the possibilities are as well. One of the common questions that many students have, and I will leave some time for you guys to ask some Q&A as well. The one common question is social security. So let me just, uh, just answer that question first. If you do not have a social security number at the moment, whether or not you're domestic students or international students, the intent for social security is for you to file proper paperwork, including tax forms, right? If there's not an active need at the moment, the US government is not gonna issue you a particular social security number of it. If you have no desire, no plans anytime in the future to actually apply for social security, right? Because again, the intent of social security number is related to taxes and legal verification and paperwork pertain to your employment in this case or any other purposes. So you can just use an opportunity to be like, I just want to get social security and just because. This is especially important for international students to think about that. 
once you have an offer, not a job only, once you have a job offer for any students, now you can go to use that information along with many other supporting paperwork to apply for social security number before you start. Your paperwork can be pending and, you, and receiving the proper paperwork before you start any job. You don't want to just start any job without paperwork to be properly authorized and approved. So you, but it doesn't mean that you have to wait until your first day of work before you apply for those, for those paperwork, right? Once you receive a job offer and you do not yet have social security information, you can use the job offer letter, formal documentations, along with any other supporting documentations to apply for social security. Once you apply once, you don't have to apply for every single job again. That number stays with you during your durations of your time in the US, whether or not international students or domestic students, that will stay with you permanently. This is a very important document that you don't want to lose. That's a very important document that you don't want to just easily show to anybody. It's a very important document that associated with who you are as a student and as a professional, as a US citizen or as an international student. So something to keep in mind, once you have that information, please safeguard that document and material along with any other popular, pop, proper documentation and such as passports or any legal authorizations for you to be validate who you are. And as part of any paperwork, whether or not on campus or off campus, many companies are gonna ask you to produce any proper documentation to verify who you are. Chances are it's going to be your passport of any some sort of identification. Chances are it's going to be your social security documentation. They usually have a, have, a, have a piece of paper to send to you, have that information available to you, along with other supporting documents. For some of you, maybe the New York State ID, maybe the New York City ID card. Or maybe it could be a student ID as a alternative documentation that might be appropriate, but usually it's official documentation from city or state. Any students should be able to apply for New York City ID, not New York State, New York City ID. If you don't have one, if you're international students, look into that option. If you are domestic students, look into New York State ID or any other former ID that you want to have ready to go for apply for any employment, whether or not it's on campus or off campus. So I just, I just want to be clear about the social security process because many times students come in and very confused about what they need to do. There is a particular link of information on the USCIS website um, and social security website about how to go through that process. Please take a look at that and go through that particular documentation process. If you have any questions about that, feel free to reach out to the career center about it. We are not authorized and none, any employee at the college are not authorized to give you specific guidance on your tax forms. Meaning if you are to require for any I-9, the, not the INID, uh, 1199 or any other tax forms, we are not authorized to tell you exactly how you fill this out because you need to read through that yourself to, to fill out the paperwork. There's something to keep in mind. I cannot just say, this is, this is a section you can ignore or omit or take out or remove, okay? Just something to keep in mind that we can tell you, please fill out through this out and complete it for your fullest extent and read through the instructions in the, on the paperwork on how to fill those out that types of documentations properly. Okay, I'm gonna stop the recording here and then we're happy to answer any questions you have